Anthony was signed for Manchester United in the summer of August 2022 for the sum of £86 million. Here are a list of things that you can get for that same price. 204,761 PS5s, 361,334 cameo shoutouts from Harry Maguire, 7.8 million months of a Netflix subscription, and most importantly, 71.6 million Greg sausage rolls. And in the 2023 24 season, you get in return of that 86 million pounds, 25 appearances, one goal, and one assist against Newport County. Fair to say it's not going well for Anthony at Manchester United. Tell me down below your thoughts on Anthony. Do you think he could get any better or do you think it's inevitable that he would just go his own way and be sold in the summer? And if you're new here, please do like and subscribe. It does mean a lot. And Mazor Designs, my own design company, use code Anthony for 20% off all items. Let's get into it. Anthony, for many people, is the embodiment of Eric Ten Hag and his time at Man United with a lot of hope and expectations. However, the actual reality is not what is perceived. When Eric Ten Hag went to Manchester United, it felt like a new era, like a new transition. Someone who is hard on players, takes authority and discipline to make sure that the claims of Man United being ran by the players no longer exist. And at the same time, bringing a traditional Dutch Ajax style play aimed on passing an expansive football. And in response, you get a style of play that I don't think anyone 18 months later can still explain. It makes it all the more concerning when Eric Ten Hag in interviews say that he cannot play the style of football he did at Ajax at Man United, which is a concern, not only because the players are particularly that bad, but also because of the fact that a lot of them has been brought in by him. Ericsson, Hoyland, Mason Mount. Mason Mount, have you, I've completely forgot that Mason Mount is even still there. Andre Onana, Safian Amrabat, Regulon, who of course went, and then Johnny Evans. M Manchester United are currently in a bit of some decent form, beating Wolves 4-3, beating West Ham 3-0 at home, even beating Aston Villa away from home, which is seen as quite a big moment. And today are playing Luton, which they likely should win, but I guess you never know. It feels like they're currently on the up right now, but one person that is not on the up is a man called Anthony. The price tag is one thing that's always going to be spoke about. £86 million for any player means that you should be getting some guaranteed success and the money spent on him is not worthwhile whatsoever. However, the worst part is this is of no fault of Anthony whatsoever and Everton Hag should take a large chunk of the blame for this. Questions about the transfer policies at United as it was revealed in December that Anthony was initially valued at £25 million pounds and that should be the amount that they should pay for him. However, Everton Hag was insistent and had to make sure he had his play at any cost. Therefore, that is how it raised up to £86 million due to the pressure and insistence of Eric Ten Hag, insisting that the way that he wants to play was reliant and, cr and crucial that he had him in his team. This is something that can also be said for quite a few players that he's brought in, such as the likes of Mason Mount. Should he really be worth £60 million? Potentially not. Same thing with the likes of Hoyland. £73 million Euros. Is that something worthwhile? He's got some ability, however, he only played for a season or so. So, is he really worth that much? Again, for me personally, no. But even though a couple months ago there was some hope, they won the League Cup and Marcus Rashford was in a remarkable piece of form and it felt like Man United was back until they lost 7 0 away at Liverpool. Fundamentally, the issue of Anthony in terms of a footballing level is that he is way too predictable and way too over reliant on his left foot, becoming one of the most predictable players to defend against in the Premier League, being labelled a one-trick pony. Despite flashes of quality with some nice little spins where he spins the ball around in a circle, he's not had too many more moments. The, great, the best moment so far for Anthony has been a winner against Barcelona in the UEFA Europa League. This 720 spin has been mocked by many people, including United you know, legends like Paul Scholes, saying, I just don't think that is skill or entertainment, that is just being a clown. He's been accused of play acting many times and is well known for having a petulant streak. This is of course probably due to the way that he was raised. Being raised around violence is definitely no way to live. The issue is a transfer fee that this demands a lot of expectation and this has a lot of pressure which he hasn't reached and will always lead to scrutiny. Everton Hag always continues to back him and pick him. Recently has been more on the bench due to his form however he will always be given a chance. However he's not really reached any expectations so far this year. Let's go into Anthony and who he is behind the scenes. Well, he grew up, of course, in Brazil.
Brazil from a favela in Sao Paulo known as Infernino, known as Little Hell, raised side by side by literal gangsters, drug dealers and grown up in dire poverty. For many players in South America they experience something relatively similar, being raised in dire poverty and crime. For many South American players if they do get an opportunity for playing for academy they absolutely have to put their life into it otherwise they may not have a life worth living for a lot of people and that is sadly the reality. If they cannot be a pro footballer then they will have to go down a route of crime. Not too long later he went on to Europe of course with Borussia Dortmund wanting him however Ajax coached by Eric Ten Hag was the first person to make an agreement. He was actually able to focus on football and to not have the stress of crime riddled around him. However due to the way that he was raised he was always on the edge. He wasn't like a typical academy player. That was smooth sailing and his personality was completely stable. With Anthony he was always on the edge. He was critiqued many times in Netherlands for his personality. For example Marco Van Basten described Anthony as childish and that he has the skills but he's confused with what he's trying to do. When Eric Ten Hag went to Manchester United he had to make sure that he brought one of his best players with him and a player that he knew and he trusted. So he was one of the first signings that Manchester United went for. Ajax got the best price possible and Anthony even got off to a pretty good start scoring in a 3-1 win at Old Trafford against Arsenal and then went on to score against Everton become the first ever player for United to score in his first three matches however sadly after these first three games he only scored one more goal in the league four goals in the league and only two assists all season and then came the summer on June 6th a allegation came out from one of Anthony's ex-girlfriends called Gabriela Calavine she filed a police report in Brazil claiming Anthony of domestic violence, threat and bodily injury. Anthony insisting that he was falsely accused. Later on in the summer, he was called up to international duty in which when he arrived in Brazil, more details was given out by his ex-girlfriend, Caroline. Accusations came out claiming that Anthony threatened to throw her out of a speeding car, punch her in the chest and resulting in a dislocation of one of her implants. Anthony again insisted that this was false, however was dropped by the Brazil team anyway. However, later on that week, two more women came forward saying that they were Objected to violence by Anthony. Reyes de Fritas claimed that she needed hospital treatment after being with him in May 2022, claiming that she was attacked in a Sao Paulo nightclub. This accusation was later dropped. Next one, Ingrid Lehner, a 33 year old banker, also claimed that Anthony was aggressive towards her in October 2022. After staying silent for three months, United released a statement announcing that Anthony has been suspended. He then returned back 19 days later after speaking with the police. When the form of Anthony has been brought up to Eric Ten Hag, which is by the way 25 appearances this season one goal and one assist against Newport County Eric Ten Hag has been insistent that the allegations against him has played a massive impact on his confidence. Eric Ten Hag saying I think it's very simple I think his off-field issues stopped him playing. Now of course stats are not everything and if you only watch football based on stats then you aren't really seeing football in a really clear way however they do all in all matter if you can't win games if you can't score goals however the performances are the main concern no one particularly hates anthony however the issue is that he is incredibly limited and with pretty bad decision making for a player at this that shot of his career if i was to ask you what is his best trait you couldn't really tell me he is a dribbler that doesn't really have the pace or ability to really take on a man unless it's cutting inside and then passing backwards he hasn't got the pace to really run down a channel and if he does that involves his right foot which he cannot use so he cannot cross on that right foot which makes him predictable that he always will end up on his left someone that means to be an attacking player with some decent technical ability to open up a midfield however he doesn't seem to really make the clear passes forward that is sometimes on and opts to go for an easier option and it does also speak volumes to the problem that's been at United for quite a few years is that United has always been a team that is more of a left-sided attacking team Luke Shaw is usually always better at advancing the ball therefore the left back is always better than the right back in attacking areas if it's Diego Dallo or Wamba Saka Paul Pogba usually preferred being on the left-hand side same thing with the likes of Marcus Rashford or Anthony Martial so most patterns of play and most good plays of football at United are usually on the left-hand side therefore that means Means that once the right winger has the ball he's usually left isolated and not really having a lot of support as the right back is rarely ever that attacking minded and the right sided midfielder also isn't that attack minded either the style of how they play isn't particularly balanced that makes them predictable in itself and right now Garnacho is currently playing in that 
right wing position and is currently doing quite decent actually very good considering his age that like, people do also like to forget yes he's a player at united that you would think should be the finished product should be a world beater but he is still so young and he is right now by far more exciting than anthony as he has actually got a lot more potential to be shown from what i've seen and from what i've been told by united fans that his selfishness of always wanting to cut inside and shoot from range has got better there has been an improvement about his selflessness looking more to take a pass than to force a bad shot the main issue is, is that those passes are particularly always safe the, the one thing that you can always say about anthony is the fact that he does always work hard which is possibly a large reason of why eric ten Hag still likes him that he usually does track back and helps out the team in that regard and that may mean that he's not as far advanced forward as what he would have been if he he didn't have to track back so much in reality uh, Anthony was always doomed to fail unless if he went on and got double digits in both goals and assists in his first year in Premier League he was always going to be critiqued for the price tag alone and that is at fault and failure of Man United recruitment in itself he should never have come to United for 86 million pounds and that could be said for quite a few players that they've brought in not just under Ten Hag, but in general in the last decade or so. Tell me your thoughts on Anthony and how you think he's going to be at United. I do think it is inevitable that he will likely get sold and he will likely go to a team in maybe France or maybe in, in Italy and he will do quite decent over there. I don't think he's a bad player. Issue is, at United, it's so hard to perform to expectations, especially when you become the second most expensive player in that entire club's history. It's also awkward to talk about Anthony due to the accusations that he's had, and you can never know completely the full story, and that is something that I particularly should probably avoid because, well, there's no evidence and nothing showing up with it. So you can only take both sides for their word, and it's your choice and who you really believe. So, yeah, tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time see ya